Kaidong. In this video, we're going to talk about aspects of Yeddo 7. We're coming to the close of most of our Yeddo forms, right? So there's going to be nine in total. So seven's pretty up there. Um, so at this point, we probably have a pretty decent idea about what the Yeddo is all about, right? So it's about, again, using the sword a little bit more to kind of guide your, your, your movement uh, in your sword forms. Potentially, you're using your you know, one-handed sword a little bit more often, uh, at least if you believe me. But at this point, we have a pretty decent idea about what Yeddo even means. But as with all the other forms, you know, out there, allegedly every form should be contributing something to, like, the greater cause or the greater idea about what these forms are doing. Uh, so in this video, we're going to have two more uh, new moves, right? Um, one that has a few um, interesting implications, right, at least depending on your interpretation. Uh, but also our third thing we're going to talk about is actually a combination that I really enjoy doing uh, because it accentuates the aspects of Yeto, or, or at, the, at the very least this, uh, the aspect in Form 7, uh, but like this, this, this combination is very, very powerful. It reinforces, again, you know, hindsight bias. It reinforces my um, dedication to the idea of one-handed uh, style, right? Uh, which is really powerful. The moves independently you've seen most of, but it's still a fun combination uh, that I like to play with. The first move is going to be the punch. Now, I've been taught this a few different times, but in general, like every time, it's fallen into one of three different categories. Uh, I'm actually going to end with the one that I agree with the most, and uh, a rare instance of the, the, the two streams crossing. It is also the most canonical. So this one is the one that was taught to me by the highest power that can be in the United States. So cool. So we can actually have, you know, one where I can actually like actually do, do as I say in this one. Uh, I'm going to lead with the one that seems to be like maybe the oddest. I mean, it still makes sense, like it's in its own uh, interpretation. Um, might have some cringeworthy uh, implications of it. But let's start with the first interpretation. The interpretation of this one is the least sportsmanlike. Uh, the idea is that it's a groin shot and you're doing as much damage as you can to that one poor bloke. Uh, so you're spear handing and then you're grabbing in this particular combination. Um, so th this might seem really, really strange, right? Uh, because it's just like out of nowhere, right? So we don't really do this kind of technique that often in Gumdo. Uh, and if you actually take a look at the rest of the form, or at the, least, at the very least the rest of this combination, there are some kind of weird implications uh, of, of, of this interpretation that I find kind of interesting in a morbid way. So if you take a look, right, so you're going to come in with that block block, spear grab, but take a look, you're like grabbing and pulling uh, that power sword um, by, by the bits, right? Uh, so notice what that block, the new interpretation of that block might be doing. It has a very different application if you take a look at, uh, again, where the blade angle is and all that fun stuff. Uh, so it's, now obviously like this is not, probably like the what what was in uh in um president kim's head when he designed this right so like all right so like it can work in the story that we're telling it's just very unsportsmanlike and there are elements of it that kind of verge on a bit too far right uh so this is one again it makes sense in its own world it's just not one that i'm going to prescribe to this also adds a few different elements to it um so first of all it assumes your opponent is not armored which is sort of fine for, again, a, a, a good number of our techniques and stuff like that. But, <laughs> again, like, the, the, the sheer amount of crudeness to it, um, and also the, the idea of just doing this to some, you know, poor armorless bloke is just not, not, not fond. Um, so, again, totally, like, legitimate. Um, I do actually like the, the feel of this combination, not with the spear hem per se. Uh, this combination in general just feels really good and really powerful. It just seems weird to have this specific implication. Uh, but our second one's going to be a little bit more, a little bit more interesting. It's going to be more sportsmanlike. Again, all of these are going to be more sportsmanlike uh, than, than what we just talked about. Uh, but let's take a look. The other application works with a scabbard. Uh, I know that's probably not what you're probably initially thinking, um, but so we actually engage the scabbard and use it with our offhand. 
So with our second interpretation, we're going to begin doing that block block, and as we stab, we're also going to hit with the mouth of our scabbard. Uh, now, why you would necessarily do this as opposed to merely striking the other person, like in with your fist or something like that, Right. Um, so, but again, it's it's engaging and it uses you know something that you have on your person uh, in a different way. So it's just it's different, right? Uh, but let's kind of like talk about some of its implications. Now we've used the scabbard before, right? Uh, we've used it in shemsong. So if you think about the the third quarter of the form, that's actually how the third quarter starts. Uh, we actually do use the scabbard to strike someone. Right now, this one's a little bit different because we're using the the mouth of the uh, of the scabbard to actually do the striking, as opposed to like the the bladed um, edge of a scabbard. But again, like so, in terms of like retconning, yes, we have hit someone with a scabbard before, but like hitting with the mouth is new, right? Uh, whether or not it's going to be effective might be a different story. So as with everything else, right? So always think about again that coin flip. So again. You have you know one 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 face on the coin. Always take a look at the other side, right? So what is this doing that potentially just punches someone or what we did in our previous interpretation? Well, well you know that. Um, you know comparing those two, what does hitting someone with a scabbard do better or worse in this case um, than just punching someone? Now one of the obvious things is it depends on how you're holding it. Right, so if you have, again, any of your fingers between you and the scabbard as you punch, it's going to hurt your fingers. Right, so most likely you're going to be holding it more, like almost probably behind the, um, the, the node, right, in your scabbard and using that to strike. But again, like, why? why right, so like, do you get more power from it? Not, not particularly, right, so if your opponent's armored, no. Right, if anything is just going to damage your scabbard and you don't want to damage your scabbard. Uh, and if it, even if it is effective and you do do some damage, you might get some blood or something in your scabbard, which is not what you want either. Um, so, yeah, right. Um, in terms of power, not so much, right? So again, we don't really get more power. We don't really get anything more from using the, um, like the hardness of the scabbard to strike if anything is going to damage your scabbard more, uh, even if you reinforce it with your hand as you do the, the hitting. Um, so all in all, it doesn't really add as much, right? Now you may maybe think about like, okay, maybe you're drawing it out to maybe protect your rib or something um, from like a cross cut and use your scabbard to absorb the blow, not unlike what we've done in Shimsung. But once again, take a look at the geometry of your arms and you know, especially your elbow is probably going to be further out than your scabbard. So unless if it's like a forward cutting this way, it's not going to do anything. Uh, so I just want to let you guys know that is something that was actually the way that I was trained uh, when I first learned Shimsong is that you're hitting with the scabbard. But again, whether or not it's useful or, or anything like that might be a different story. But we also have our third interpretation. Uh, this is the one that is both canonical and the one I like. So we, we have the, the best of both worlds, right? Uh, so this one's gonna be mostly about just hitting the person. I know that sounds a little bit lackluster. Uh, there's a slight nuance to it that you might wanna add if you want to, uh, but you're just gonna be going up and just uh, so side punching someone. So it's not a normal, uh, for example, Taekwondo punch where you're rolling with the punch. It's a, you know, going straight in this way. Um, but it's, it's simpler, right? but does all that you need it to, right? So you don't need to grab someone and throw them around. You don't necessarily need to use your scabbard and potentially damage that uh, without really having that payoff. Uh, you're just punching someone. So if you take a look, right? Uh, so we're gonna be using that sword again, almost as a flurry, again, just kind of like maybe distracting them or something like that. And you're gonna come in and with that thrust and that punch uh, to someone to your to your 45, right? So someone to your, you know, pi over four, if you want to think of it that way, because I like radians. Um, right, so you're just gonna be striking someone with your fist. Uh, that said, even that is gonna have two variations. Uh, so, I'll, I mean, that's gonna be really, really quick to take a look, uh, but let's take a look. So the first version is simply a punch. Again, it's not a twisting punch like in very uh, most traditional uh, Taekwondo, for example. It's just going straight in, right? Uh, so that's fine, right? So you're just striking someone with your knuckle. Uh, you're maybe aiming for the sword plexus or just like knock some wind out. And then you use your sword later, to kind of cover yourself, maybe push them or whatever's going on. Um, but again, that's a standard punch. 
Now the other version is going to be actually using uh, open hand is a little more common in Gundo when we do in fact do open hand or, or even when you're in your chumbi position uh, this is an option that you have uh, you can actually use um, the middle knuckle uh, so again you might wonder why right uh, so versus uh, taekwondo tangsudo and all those other more open hand styles uh, when you do engage someone instead of trying to like break or something like that um, a lot of open hand in gumdo is actually going to be nerve strikes. Uh, so for example, if we do use that middle, that middle knuckle sticking out a little bit more, uh, we have a lot more pressure for that same force, right? Because of the small surface area, because of physics. Um, but we're going to use that knuckle to do a little more damage on nerve centers. Uh, so just keep that in mind, right? It's just something that you can add to either flavor it or just get an idea or better understanding about what gumdo does, at least when we're doing open hand. The second aspect that I would like to talk about today is the really weird, uh, the, 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 the quasi kneel, right? So it's like a knee down position that you have pretty much right after this combination that we do um, in, the, in the previous aspect. So we have our clear, right? And we're gonna drop down into our one-handed pao sangse, but notice the knee is on the ground. Uh, now notice this otherwise would be a kneel, uh, with the exception that the side of the heel is also on the ground. Uh, so this is, a, this is very strange, right? So uh, that means you have a lot of flexing uh, on the on, in, you know, inside of your hip. Uh, side note, this is actually good if you do need to pop your hip. It's actually a pretty decent stance for you to kind of lean into. Uh, don't, you know, get hurt because, yeah. Um, but I get, allegedly, like, again, like this is a stance that is just really, really strange. So it's kind of in the same vein as... Um, uh, other weird stances like the Bokuse in Sangsu 7 or the uh, the Unicorn Stab in Yeto 5 or the Eagle Stance, you know, Rainbow Cut in Sangsu 8. So we have a few different stances that kind of still play with these kind of ideas, almost like it's a weird flex, right? Kind of like showing just how flexible you are, how powerful you are, how, you know, dexterous you are. Um, in terms of application, right? Uh, so I might be a little bit biased because I have a lot of difficulty getting into the stance and coming out of it. Uh, now part of that is because I lack uh, half of my lateral meniscus in my knee. But even if it, even if I had a fully cartilage knee, it would probably still be difficult. That said, if you do in fact have like a knee injury or anything like that, uh, just like with most of the strenuous moves in Gumdo, there is an alternative that you can do, and that's simply going into the deepest long stance you can manage. Again, it's not as impressive, especially when you go to like testings and stuff like that, or you know, or tournament, right? So if you go to the Olympia or any other major tournament and they're expecting to see that move, it might be a little bit lackluster. Uh, but do know, like, if you have any you know, knee issues or if it's just again too hard in your body, obviously still train to get to that position. Uh, but again, know that if you needed to, you could simply go into a really, really steep uh, tato say. So what might be a purpose for a stance like this, right? So this one, uh, again, reminiscent of, again, Sangsu 7, um, is really, again, a, a power flex to a certain degree, but also is, again, working on other aspects uh, as well, right? So for example, engaging the core, so you, you know, your core is tight as you drop, right? Uh, it shows really good strength, uh, with your, especially your, with your right uh, leg, right? So holding up the, the weight of your body, um, not so sure about like why the knees down and like and again like uh, the side of the uh, the shin is kind of like like in parallel to the ground. Seems a little bit strange to me. Um, but again, uh, if you can do this and as you train with it, you do notice that it's really good for again that control. Um, potentially, the idea is also just getting out of the way of an incoming attack and just dropping down below their power zone. But again, uh, it's mostly just kind of working on the. Not quite the aesthetic because that kind of um, <laughs> takes away some of the you know the, the the seriousness of it again if you just think of it merely as aesthetic. Um, but again, like the idea is to drop out and again going to the deep tail say also can do that. The last thing that I would like to talk about is just a combination, right? So this is the near the end, right? So this is not quite the last combination of the form. Uh, is in fact actually what comes next after um, this com the, the the combination we just did. Um, it's just, I just like it because it's just good power. So notice again, you just really get really deep and back. Stepping back and really deep stance and back. And just notice just how engaging you can be 
with again your stance and that, and how augments you know the power of your sword, and just notice how much control you have to have with your hips, right? Um, and also the the sword, right? So the sword is still has to be really really powerful because you're fighting. Right, you're in the middle of the form, uh, but again, you're using that stance, you're using uh, everything you have at your disposal to get really good, powerful results. Um, so I just, I just really love this combination. Now, I might also simply like this because it reinforces my idea that it is a one-handed form because all of this is one-handed, um, but I also just love just the body engagement. I know I've already mentioned that, but the body engagement with this particular one, because you notice, again, your, your core moves a lot, right? So allegedly in this combination, your your sore plexus hits your knee, right? So we, we've never done that before in a stance yet, right? Um, or, or, you know, in the combination, we're really leaning in, really trying to grab their knee at a really long distance. But also again, think about the application, right? So if I go for someone's knee, I know my head is open. What do I do? I draw back into that one-handed block. And again, you go for the knee again and block. You go for the knee again and do a different block. You do three different kinds of blocks, working on like just being able to strike from any real position. I just really like the power. I just really like just the feel of this part of the form. And for some reason, I really like that, that twisting portion leading into it uh, with the thrust, but that's not part of the combination. It's just a good portion of the form. So as always, can we retcon? Uh, so our first thing we talked about with our first, so it's like 1.1, right? Uh, is a groin shot. Now, do we ever do groin shots in Gumdo? Yes. Uh, so actually take a look at the form uh, in Yoda 4, for instance. Uh, so we do, in fact, do vertical cuts, right? So the idea, at least the canonical idea of a vertical cut is you're going up the opposite direction of a center cut, right? So you're pretty much hitting the groin, going up as far as you can, or as far as your uh, sword will go. So it, so it is canonical to do a groin shot. Now, obviously the idea of you know, manhandling, <laughs> uh, anything past that is just not, it's just not part of any other form uh, as far as I know, right? Um, so that portion is a little bit different. Um, but even on that point, I'm going to say like, well, yes, you can use a vertical cut that way, uh, but it's actually more effective. And this is especially going to be true when we talk about Bonk Up 2. It's just really more effective just striking the insides of legs. So not you know, groin, but like striking the inside of the thigh to get that, that nice artery there, or hitting the back of the knee to like, again, sever the hamstrings. You can do all sorts of good things with these vertical cuts that are just more effective and more sportsmanlike than, you know, a vertical cut to the groin. Uh, so yes, we have done it. It is canonical, um, but not to the extent that we've seen in this form. And also for that account, uh, in general, like we don't, we don't usually go all Kronos on someone, right? Uh, the idea is a little bit more respect for your enemy, right? So we, so, which is gonna be a little bit different from like being nice to them, right? So we do what's effective, which, you know, is, is, is the point of fighting, right? So being effective without strikes, but there's still, again, an overlying, um, underlying, overlying, meh, uh, overarching, but underlying um, idea of sportsman, you know, sportsmanship, right? So like, you don't, you would rather, you know, you know, die with your dignity, right? So we're not gonna do the same thing uh, against someone else. So keep that in mind. That said, do we ever grab someone? Maybe, right? So uh, this is gonna be one where I'm like 100% the weird one. This is something that I've developed just because um, the, the combination that I'm thinking about, so I'm thinking about things to eight. Um, the combination Leading into the switch reverse uh, cut in Sang Sui, for, for instance, uh, the application always seemed weird to me, right? Because you're allegedly running away from someone, you switch to reverse grip. Again, why switch to reverse grip when you can just like turn the normal cut? Um, and then you do a reverse cut, right? Um, so I think I probably talked about this in the past, but the idea might simply be grabbing. So notice that you can actually switch to reverse grip, grab the person, and sort of throw them, again, manhandle them, sort of like we did in, in, in this form, again, engaging the hips, and just throw them, hip check them, and really use the momentum of, again, that twisting of your body to kind of power up your cut, right? Uh, so according to my very singular, I think, I'm not sure, I don't think anyone else considers it this way, um, yes, we have grabbed um, an opponent before, we may have even done it later in that same form, so Sang Su 7 after the pop pop, 
right? Uh, you might throw them to do a crosscut, but again, we can talk about interpretations later. Uh, but yes, so in the past, we potentially could have grabbed an opponent. Have we ever hit someone with a scabbard? Again, we talked about this during the video, right? But yeah, so we, we've hit set people with a scabbard before in Shimsong. Uh, and as far as I know, that's really as far as we've gotten. Um, I know that there was some interpretation by some masters, which isn't canonical anymore. Um, we were actually, in the beginning of Shimsong, actually draw the whole sword out and actually draw it this way. Uh, that's not how it is anymore, if it was ever that way. Uh, but even in that form, we do engage the scabbard a little bit, right? Um, but again, we don't hit with a mouth. Uh, we usually hit again with a with a side, you know, the the, the edge of the scabbard. Um, but yeah, so we do in fact hit with a scabbard. Now, in terms of hitting again with a punch or a nerve punch or anything like that, at least up until this point, no. So I think that this is fairly new, at least in terms of a new concept uh, to a gumdo form. So, huzzah! We have something that's brand new. Um, I don't think, at least off the top of my head, any particular instance where you would punch someone when you could have cut them, uh, because most of, again, so almost all the Sangsu is two-handed, uh, and even within the Yeto, uh, even if you do interpret it one-handed, it's more likely to be grabbing as opposed to punching someone in the face. So, yeah, uh, so I believe this is going to be a new thing for us. In terms of an extreme stance, yes, so again, we talked about this obviously in, in the video as well. Uh, now, what I really like is that, uh, so Yeto 7, and Sangsu 7's extreme stances are more or less mirror images, right? So in the Sangsu 7, your left knee is the one that's, you know, doing all the legwork, <laughs> funny, uh, where you can actually like bend the knee, and that's really what's plummeting down. Uh, and Yeto 7 is the right knee. So I, I, I like that there's a symmetry. I also like that they're both seven, just because kind of neat. Um, but again, we've seen other extreme stances before. For example, we have the rainbow cut in eagle stance in Sangsu 8, and we have the Unicorn Stab in Yeto 5. So again, we do have extreme stances, again, playing with mostly getting really out of their way, uh, or again, getting below like their power zone in order to like strike them from a place that they wouldn't necessarily think to block. Uh, but again, we do have extreme stances. Can you turn any of your long stances into like this weird knee down stance? Maybe. Whether or not you should, it might be a different story. Now, our last aspect was simply a combination working on hip engagement, power, using the core, and all that fun stuff, and one-handed. I'm just gonna keep bringing that up because I think I'm right. Um, but yeah, so like, do we ever use, loaded question, do we ever use our core, our you know hip movement, all that fun stuff, to get more and more power? No, never. Yes. Right? So we do do that very, very often as a core concept, core concept uh, that we apply, right? So again, that's something and use this portion of the form to really feel the extremes of what you can do and apply that to your previous forms, right? So for example, something as simple as again, Sangsu 1, drawing into that Teose for that cross cut, engage the same muscles as you would when you're going into that really deep stance for the knee strikes, right? Uh, so again, Using this combination would be really good to, again, feel that power, right? Um, but yeah, so think about all these different concepts. Again, retcon everything that you can. Maybe I'm wrong. Think about some, you know, put it down in the comments if you want to. Like, just tell me that I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, so I guess with that, so stay safe, right? So stay safe, stay humble, and keep training. Taidong!